and welcome to my kitchen. Normally you're in my cake room with me and I'm decorating cakes and I'm baking and all that. But because we're all stuck at our houses, our family all on top of us, and we're gonna go a little bit stir crazy, I wanted to show you a kind of a simple, easy recipe that you can do at home with the most simple of ingredients. And I'll even tell you some different variations of those ingredients as we go along so you don't have to run out to the grocery because they probably have no food on the shelves. And so my husband's gonna join me later on and we're gonna make this breakfast casserole. I've got sausage and cheese and eggs and a little bit of uh, bread like croutons on top. And so I wanted to show you this so that you could make it at home the night before, put it in the refrigerator overnight. The next morning, all you have to do is uncover it and pop it in the oven and it's ready to go. And then the next few days, all they have to do, take it out of the fridge, pop it on a plate in the microwave and they're set for breakfast. So when you run out of cereal, this can be your go-to recipe. Okay, so we've got all of our ingredients out over here and I'm gonna start with the sausage. So the recipe actually called for like ham, like cubed ham, like pre-cooked. I didn't have any, so we're using breakfast sausage. And because I didn't have a, like a tube of breakfast sausage, I took, we had from breakfast sausage patties in our freezer and this is four. I cooked up four of them. I broke them up a little bit, but I'm gonna have my husband Aaron do a coarse chop on those so they're a little bit smaller and easier to eat. Okay, and then I'm gonna take two tablespoons of unsalted softened butter. Actually, it probably doesn't have to be softened because you're gonna melt it anyway, but I'm gonna, I don't really measure out butter unless I'm baking, so we're gonna guesstimate, and we're gonna put that in a large saucepan. I'm gonna turn that on low heat. Okay, and I'm gonna melt this down. I'm gonna add a little bit of flour, salt and pepper, and make like a roux. Um, and then I'm gonna add some cheese, and we're gonna make a kind of a cheese sauce to go with our egg mixture. So while I'm doing that, now I'm gonna have Aaron go ahead and chop this onion. It's a, it calls for about half an onion. This is whatever I had left in the refrigerator from something else. So we're gonna make it work. So for any of you who are not familiar with chopping a lot of onions, of course, Mother Nature gave, you know, they're built in rings. So you're gonna start by going the opposite direction of that. So you're gonna go all the way across, and I'll have Aaron continue that. And then once he's done that, he'll turn it this way and do it again this way. You'll have little tiny diced onion. So you do the whole thing. And when you're melting butter and making roux, wooden spoons are best. I don't know why, but it just helps me um, stir a little bit better without scratching the pan. And I feel like as it starts to thicken, I notice it more on a wooden spoon than a metal spoon. So I'm going to melt this butter. And once it's melted, I'm going to start adding my flour. And it's two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. So once your butter is completely melted, then you're going to dump in the two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Then you're going to do an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper, black pepper. I'm not really going to measure it. We're just going to sprinkle it in there. Looks about right. And about half a teaspoon of coarse salt. Put that in. Then you're going to go back to your wooden spoon and you're just going to stir that in. And you basically just want to make sure there's no big chunks as it heats through so it kind of absorbs all that flour. And if you feel like you're getting chunks, if it's not smooth, you could grab a whisk at this point and break it up a little bit. But it's really just, I mean, it kind of almost makes it go. So this point is when you're going to start adding two cups of milk. And I'm using 2%. You could use 1%. You could use whole. I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. It's just kind of your preference. But I am going to turn the heat up just a little bit, close to medium, like a medium low. And I'm slowly going to pour in some milk. And I would do probably a, maybe a third or a half of it and then go back to your metal whisk and whisk that. Because you don't want this to scald. So you want to pretty much whisk it the entire time as you're going back and forth adding the milk. And just keep adding the milk until it's all evenly incorporated and there are no lumps. So once you've got all your milk incorporated, you're gonna bump it up to a medium because you're gonna to wanna to bring this to a boil. But again, you have to continue to stir. So I'm gonna use the whisk for a couple of minutes and then I'll probably switch over to a wooden spoon because again, that'll help me notice when it's thickened. Because once you bring it to a boil, you're going to let it boil for about a minute and a half to two minutes or until it feels thick. And I'll show you what that's gonna look like on your wooden spoon. Alright, 
so I've been stirring it consistently the entire time with a wooden spoon. And as you can see, it is starting to boil. So I'm actually gonna turn my heat back to like a medium low so it doesn't scald the bottom. Because my burgers are getting really hot really fast. And I can already feel that it's starting to get a little thicker. So I may only do this for about a minute, let it boil for about a minute. Okay, so it's been about a minute, a minute and a half. And I wanted to show you kind of what that's gonna look like. So it's still bubbling a little bit, but how I know that it's thick, not only can you feel it when you are scraping the bottom of that pan with your wooden spoon, but you can pick up your wooden spoon and draw a line through it and burn your hand in the process. But that's how you know it's thick enough. If that line stays put, it doesn't fill back up right away, you're good to go. So now I've dumped it back to low and I'm gonna add my shredded cheese. I have about three fourths of a cup of shredded cheese you can use whatever cheese you have or want. This is the cheese that we had in the refrigerator. It's just a blend of like Monterey Jack and cheddar. So I'm gonna pop that in, blend this, let it melt down with it, and I'm gonna turn this off of the heat. While I'm doing this, my husband is gonna be chopping up some slices of bread. Whole wheat, like a sturdy bread, would probably be preferable at this point, but again, we didn't wanna to go to the grocery, so we have just plain white bread. But he's chopping that into about, like what I'll consider bite-sized pieces, like crouton-sized pieces, because that's gonna go on the top once we get it all combined. I'm just gonna dump that in and I'm gonna continue to stir. And I actually am gonna go ahead and turn my heat off here because I feel like it's getting too hot. Because I just want that cheese to melt and completely combine with the butter mixture and milk. All right, I think we're good. So I'm just gonna set this to the side and it'll thicken a little bit as it sits here so I definitely wanna get off that hot burner. And now we're gonna bring in a non-stick skillet just because it makes our life easier. So Aaron, if you want to add your onions to that, yep. I'm going to get one tablespoon of butter, approximately, because I don't measure. And again, I'm going to put this on probably like a medium low would be good. And we just want these, they don't have to fully caramelize, you don't have to get them brown, but you do want them to soften quite a bit. And Aaron, if you'll hand me a wooden spoon. Yep. So Aaron is softening those onions for me, and babe, if you need to, you can buff the heat up if you think it's not happening fast enough. But you just don't want them to get too brown. So while he's doing that, the cheese milk mixture is cooling. I just kind of want to let you know what we're going to be doing. So once he gets that done, we're going to add the sausage back in. It's, it's already cooked, but it's just going to heat it back through so it's the same temperature as our onions. Then we are going to add our cheese sauce back into this as well, and we're going to stir that around. Then we're going to beat our eggs. I've got eight whole eggs over here. We're just gonna beat those with a fork. No milk necessary, because you've already got milk in your cheese sauce. And you're gonna put those in there also, but you're not gonna cook the eggs all the way. You're only gonna cook them probably three quarters of the way if you were actually measuring it out. Like you just want them to still be a little wet, if that makes any sense, because they're gonna cook again in this casserole tomorrow morning when you go to bake this. Okay, so Aaron has the onions to like a nice translucent color, but they're not too brown. We're gonna dump the sausage back in just to heat that through maybe for a minute. So do you wanna toss that back in, babe? All right, so I'm just gonna stir that around. And he also went ahead and we just use a basic fork. You can use a whisk, but a fork is great to beat up those eight whole eggs. You could do egg whites. I don't know why you wouldn't be able to for a healthier option. All right, babe, you want to dump those in? You just dump the whole heat, thing over. I put our heat back on low. For yeah, and the heat is back down because we don't want to burn the eggs. Perfect. Okay, so this is the part where you're going to, you're going to cook the eggs about three quarters of the way, not completely. And then we're gonna to top it with the cheese sauce, fold that in, and then we'll be able to transfer it over to our casserole dish. And also, while I'm doing this, I melted four teaspoons of butter. And we have a bowl here, and Aaron's gonna to toss in his bread cubes into that bowl, and then he's gonna pour the butter over them. And then, baby, if you just wanna grab a wooden spoon or something and toss them around a little bit, you wanna coat them. 
because you want those to be nice and crispy and that butter will help them toast really good in the oven. Okay, so I feel like that's about two thirds, three fourths away cooked. It's still a little bit wet. I wouldn't want to eat like this. So that means it's not quite ready, which is good. Now we are going to dump in the cheese sauce. So if you want to pour that over. Okay, so now we're ready to transfer it over to our baking dish. It's a nine by 13. You can use glass, non-stick, whatever you have at home. I have sprayed this with a little bit of cooking spray so this doesn't stick. And I'm gonna dump my egg mixture right into my casserole dish. Try to spread it somewhat evenly across your baking dish. Okay, now Aaron, if you want to dump in the breadcrumbs and just kind of sprinkle them somewhat evenly over the top. And then once he gets that sprayed in, I've got one eighth of a teaspoon of paprika and I'm just barely going to sprinkle this over the breadcrumbs. And so that it gives a little bit of kick, a little bit of smokiness when we go to eat this tomorrow morning. Okay, I think we're good. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this in plastic wrap completely. I'm gonna put it in my refrigerator overnight. And then tomorrow morning when I get up, I'm going to take the plastic wrap off and let it sit on the counter for about 30 minutes before I put it in the oven. In the meantime, I can preheat my oven to 350. Um, I tend to use a convection oven. If you don't want to, you don't have to, but if you do, I would do 325 on the convection. But anyway, it's gonna bake for about 40 to 45 minutes uncovered. Don't put aluminum foil over it because you want that bread to get toasted and then let it sit in a pan for about five minutes before you slice it so it's nice and firm. All right, so it came out of the oven. I actually baked it probably closer to 50 minutes, but I had my oven on 325 convection and I covered it in aluminum foil probably the last 10 minutes because as you can see, the breadcrumbs got pretty toasted. So, we're gonna taste it. That's pretty good. Always good. Mm -hmm. I did okay. an excellent job. Yeah, you did a great job. So what I would say is, this has no potatoes in it, but because of the cheese sauce, it kind of has like a hash brown casserole taste to it, but without the carbs from the potatoes. So, I give it a thumbs up. Welcome to my kitchen. Normally I'm doing cake tutorials and I'm in my cake room and we're doing decorating, but today, because we're all stuck inside and we're all going stir crazy and we're only on day like, what, three of being stuck inside, I wanted to show you kind of an easy recipe. It's not too crazy. Um, I'm gonna kind of make it my own based off the ingredients I have because all the grocery stores are empty and I don't want you guys to go out and buy anything specific. And my husband, Aaron, is gonna be here to help me and he's gonna help me chop up some vegetables and do some prep. But we're gonna make a breakfast casserole. And this is something you can make the day ahead. Actually, you need to make it the day ahead, the night before, pop it in the fridge, and then you bake it the next morning. Hey, we are going to be making something a little different than I normally do on the sweet, sweet, see? The sweet, I broke them up a little bit, but I'm gonna have my husband, Aaron, do a coarse chop on those so they're a little bit smaller and easier to eat. You wanna do that? Hi, uh, folks. Here to show you my sweet knife skills. I'm totally going to take that out. But. Why? That'd be fun. It's too late now. You said I'm going to take that out. And then I'll, I'll try to say something about your wow. chopping skills, like just to, so it's not so boring. I got some sweet knife skills. That's what you're I'm not going to say sweet knife skills because that's not something I would ever say. <laughs> pretty good with a bow staff. Yeah. He's pretty good with a bow staff. He's better with a chopping block. You should record yourself taste testing it. I think we should. But see, that's not going to be until tomorrow. But that's okay. This didn't, I'm not gonna edit this bill in anyway. Cause once, after we go to the doctor in the morning, we'll come back, <laughs> we'll come back and um, I'll put it in the oven and then we'll taste it. Oh. 